far as, you know, the sentencing, the judge giving Mr. Lewis the max for this? Well, I'm disappointed in the sentence. This is certainly a case that I don't think deserves the maximum sentence, as I pointed out to the judge. Uh, he, you know, most misconduct in office cases involving actually using your office to, for personal financial gain or for a law enforcement officer to thwart uh, the investigation of a crime or to cover up a crime. And this certainly you know, was not that type of a case. You talked a lot about last night when you spent some time with Mr. Yeah. Lewis about his character there. How much did that kind of weigh into your message to the judge today? We sat down with him way, way to about 2 a.m., to be frank with you. Um, it weighed a lot into it. It's probably a conversation I should have sat down and had with him, you know, many, many months ago just to, to get to know him as an individual instead of getting to know his case because that's an important aspect of it. Um, you know, it, it, he had an affair. Uh, uh, I still am having trouble seeing. Uh, how that affair uh, cost the sheriff's department any money. Um, the jury saw it another way, but as I mentioned yesterday, it's a very vague statute, and exactly what he had to do to violate it is, is really, I think, almost in the eye of the beholder because the, the wording of it is so vague. So. But they've made their decision. We've got to make a decision now whether to appeal this, uh, which will probably be done. Uh, and we've got uh, roughly 10 days to do it. The solicitor also brought up, you know, issue with these charges being vague, obviously, you know, on the other end of the spectrum from why you consider them vague. Do you think that there needs to be some sort of, you know, revamping of those types of charges in the future so that jurors can see them more clearly? The South Carolina legislature needs to seriously revamp the misconduct in office statutes. I mean, we, we desperately need that. The common law misconduct in office statute of which he was acquitted uh, is also very vague, and we don't know exactly what it means, even though we have a few cases interpreting it. And I hope the legislature does address it. I hope they come up with something that's more, much clearer so that not only will jurors be able to understand it, but elected officials will have a very, very clear understanding of what their conduct would be or could be that we could get them in trouble. Do you feel like the jurors took enough time in really examining those charges and trying to figure out, you know, exactly where the evidence went for each charge? I wouldn't remotely have an opinion on that. I wasn't in the jury room watching the deliberations or listening in, so I wouldn't even have a... Once, once that sentencing came down, can you speak on to, you know, Will Lewis, how he was behaving after that sentencing came down, if he said anything to you or to his wife after? Uh, he spoke to his wife. I didn't, wasn't privy to that conversation, but uh, you know, he was disappointed with it, uh, you know, quite obviously. You said that, you know, people, we shouldn't be defined on a few months. So we should be valued as a, or be evaluated sure. as a whole. Why was that important for you to say in that sentencing? Because there's a lot more good in that man's life than those five or six months of bad. And uh, if you, you know, you don't want to be judged by the worst moment in your life, and I don't want to be judged by the worst case I've ever tried. You said that he could work with his church. How important will that be going forward as far as, you know, the judge says, we'll see if he actually does that. Do you believe that he will work with his church yes. through ministry? Yes. Why? Because <laughs> I got to know Will. Um, and I'm, I'm, as I told the judge, I'm glad I did not get to know him when he was elected sheriff. I truly don't think I would have liked that man. Uh, but, uh, no, he's a very sincere uh, person. I think there's no doubt in my mind he'll get involved in, in some ministries like that. Uh, I think he has a great message to sit across the table from people in prisons and, and talk to them about you know, making bad decisions and creating problems for yourself. Will you be asking for any specific security measures or, or safety <clears throat> procedures to, to ensure his safety? I'm, I'm going to be in touch with the uh, Department of Corrections and see, you know, just to alert them and see what we can do. I don't know. I've never had somebody that's high-profile law enforcement officer go to prison before, so what measures are there right now, I don't know. Do you feel that not taking the plea deal, do you feel that weighed in any way into, into the sentence today? Are you asking if there's a trial penalty? <clears throat> I think more than likely, yes. How so? He got the maximum sentence after a trial with no record. What other conclusion can you make?
Well, the jury did find him guilty, and he was the sheriff of Greenville County. Correct. And and I really think, it's a big, as I mentioned earlier, it's a big, big difference between uh, a sheriff of Greenville County who has an affair on company time, whether or not that is a, a crime, and the sheriff of a county who covers up uh, or takes bribes to, to hide crime and stuff like that. Big, big difference. One clearly is, is, the, is the most reprehensible sheriff in the world. The other one may be a reprehensible moral individual. Now, the judge was saying that, you know, the things that Will Lewis <coughs> took from the taxpayers here in Greenville County were not able to be repaid monetarily. Do you feel like there is a way that he can repay the citizens here in other ways? You can always repay society by leading good and moral lives, no question about that. But I don't think that, uh, frankly, uh, a, sheriff's, uh, a sheriff's job is 24 hours a day. There's no question about that. That doesn't mean you don't have your time to yourself. And I think this affair was basically involving time to himself, not time. Uh, not time during a budget right. meeting? Uh, no, there was no sex during the budget meeting. As far as we know. <laughs> <laughs> as far as everybody said, no, that was no, no. It was all, it was all after hours, and that's the, you know, that's why I don't think it re really dealt into the time he had to the job. The real tragedy in this case, and I, I said it to the jury yesterday, is that Will Lewis, I really believe, could have made an excellent sheriff. Uh, he had big ideas. He had enthusiasm. He was young enough to be. Uh, spend the time with it and the energy, um, and due to some bad personal decisions, he threw it away. Do you have any advice for anyone who may decide to run for that position, you know, now that there will be an election to decide who takes his place? Man, myself a political advisor, I don't know about that, but uh, <laughs> I would just say that Truly, the lesson from this is what I said. If you're going to run for public office, you've got to be like Caesar's wife uh, and be beyond reproach, uh, even the suggestion of it. Uh, because that law is so vague that uh, you don't know what misstep would lead you into a criminal courtroom. There was a lot of talk being made, too, about Mrs. Lewis joining Mr. Lewis up there. Could you kind of speak to that and kind of why why that was the case? It's happened in cases before mine. I mean, it, and the judge allowed it in this one. She started out there when the jury was selected. It would kind of been uh, a little awkward, and then all of a sudden then she doesn't sit up there. So, I mean, the jury could perceive negatives from that. Uh, it's just not that big a deal. Anything else that we need to know that we didn't think to ask? No, I don't know. I hadn't thought about that. <laughs> Sometimes the most important question. I know. If, if, mm -hmm. if there is some sort of appeal that, that you would decide mm -hmm. over the next 10 days, mm -hmm. how would that process come about? What exactly would happen there? Well, we had found those intent to appeal first. We would also apply for an appeal bond uh, before Judge Cooper. Uh, and if he gets an appeal bond, he'd be released on the appeal bond until the appeal was heard. After the notice of intent to appeal is filed, you request a copy of the transcript, uh, and you have to get that before the, the appeal can actually go forward. It would take 18 months, two years roughly. All right. Thank you for your time, sir. Okay. Thank you so much. Yes.